In this video, we're gonna do a little bit of a deep dive because what I have over here is a Marimo notebook with a SQL cell. This SQL cell is connected to a SQLite engine that I've got running locally, but I'm also using Logfire. Logfire is this tracing and metrics tool made by the folks who also make Pydanic. I think it's a really nice tool. This is what the interface looks like, by the way. And you can do some fancy things here, like sometimes you can do nested tracing and you can open up this query and inspect it. There's also great things you can do if you're interested in tracing LLMs and all that. But if you wanna set that up, what you gotta do is you gotta go and do something like make a SQL Alchemy connection that gives you a engine, and then Logfire can then instrument a SQL Alchemy connection and that is how whenever I'm running a query, I'm also able to get some logging. So there we are. This is the original SQL query. Let's just return two rows for good measure. If I were now to go into Logfire itself, and if I were to refresh it, maybe have a look at stuff that happened in the last five minutes, then you can see the query does make an appearance and I can look at all sorts of statistics. This is interesting. This is pretty cool. But what I figured that I might want to have is maybe do this the other way around. If I'm doing all sorts of interesting tracing, then maybe what I would want is also be able to run SQL on these traces. Now, lucky for me, Logfire actually gives you a pretty nice API for this. You have this Logfire query client. You can write your SQL into a nice string. You then instantiate your client with some sort of a reads token. And then with that client instantiated, you can do something like, hey, let's query, and I want to have an arrow table, something in arrow format return. And then you can use polars to actually read from an arrow. And you know, uh, you then end up with a polars data frame. Life is good. And you know, this does kind of work, but I was wondering like, wouldn't it be so much easier if it was just some sort of a nice way such that all this SQL, if we could maybe write that in a normal SQL cell inside of a Remo notebook, wouldn't that be just way nicer? And you know, that felt like a worthy pursuit. And this led me down the path to learn about the PEP249 Python database API specification version two from 1999. This is an old thing, but it turns out that that is the thing that you can implement in order to get Logfire working inside of SQL inside of Marimo. So at this point, you might wonder, well, that's great, but what do are we actually specifying here? Well, in short, you are basically meant to provide a couple of methods and a couple of classes. And if they follow the specification, then a bunch of Python libraries just know how to deal with this concept of a database. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that SQLite 3, the Python library, uses this under the hood. And I did some Googling, apparently, Psycope G2 for Postgres also uses this under the hood. And again, it is a specification. So if you scroll down, what you'll notice is you have to implement a couple of warnings and a couple of errors. But the main thing you got to do if you want to implement something custom for like a third party for your own uh, project, then you got to implement these methods. That's usually where most of the work is in. So you have to have some sort of an execute method and there's an execute many method. Uh, there are also these uh, fetch all and fetch many kinds of things that you got to implement. There's things with cursors. So what I figured I might do as a quick exercise is see if an LLM can vibe code this. And whenever it makes mistakes, I figured I would just fix all of that by hand. And I actually came up with something that kind of works. I'm not going to go into the code in full detail, partially because it's still an API that I'm a little bit unfamiliar with. And it's in a working state now, so that's really cool, but I don't want to suggest that I'm an expert on it. It's also something I want to iterate over because it does a few things that I'd like, but there's also something still missing. But uh, long story short, I have this one execute method over here. That's where the query can go in. And then if you go down, uh, you're gonna see that familiar log fire query client that I had before, right? Uh, but this is a class that also has all those other methods implemented. So there's the fetch one, there's the fetch many, you know, you implement all of these things. After that, you have this database connection object as well, where uh, you pass it a read token, there's a cursor method and a bunch of other things. But in the end, you can come up with a connect function that will return a logfire DB connection. And if you do all of that right, you can come up with a variable here that represents a connection. You can then call mo.sql directly inside of a Python cell, put the logfire connection in, repeat the SQL that we had above, and lo and behold, we have something that actually returns us stuff. And this is super cool because this is something that's quite general. I'm using Logfire here, but if you have any kind of service that has some sort of a give us a string of SQL and then we want stuff to come out again, then you can now put that in a SQL cell inside of Marimo 2. What you got to do is you got to make sure that the SQL cell is actually pointing to that Logfire connection, and then you can hit run. And wouldn't you know it, you now have nice highlighting right here. So that is definitely um, super duper cool. This work isn't quite done yet though, because one of the things I haven't found out yet how to implement is if you go to this explore data sources panel over here, then um, in Marimo, you can see that, hey, there's a SQLite connection over here. You can open it up and you can actually inspect all these different tables. Um, same thing, by the way, with all these different uh, data frames. But the one thing that right now isn't happening is stuff that should go in there. 
If I look at the SQL that I've got here, there should be a records table that comes out of this connection, but I don't see that records table appear over here. So that's definitely something I will come back to. Uh, the main thing I just wanted to show for now is the fact that we have a thing. We have this Python database specification, and I was just not aware of it. I would imagine that if you follow this specification, it's not just Marimo that might benefit from it, probably other packages too. And if you feel like playing around with this, then uh, I put the GitHub gist right here. I'm gonna add a link to the show notes. Uh, who knows, maybe the Logfire people will do something with this, maybe not. It is definitely uh, early, I guess you could say, because it's just the small hour I spent trying to figure this stuff out. And I can definitely imagine uh, a couple of other services that have like a SQL-like interface where having something like this is just uh, super duper nice. So uh, in short, there's a specification called the Python Database API Specification version 2. There's a reason why it's actually pretty cool. And one of them is that you can have these very fancy SQL cells work inside of Marimo, which is uh, super cool.